Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction, and this is String Theory Explained. What is the true nature of reality? By the channel Kuz Gazad in a nutshell. Is String Theory the final solution for all physics questions, or an overhyped dead end? Yeah, String Theory, I think you know, basically tries to answer everything about the world. Like you know, I think you know, particles and things are like you know, strings rather than zero dimensional points that we are thinking of right now. So obviously, it's hard to do what String Theories are trying to explain because they're trying to explain everything. I mean, that's hard to do because we already don't know everything to begin with. I mean, uh, you can come up with your theory like it could be this if we know basic things to begin with. And we don't even know if we know the basic things like, you know, the, the basically, you know, uh, laws of gravity. And, you know, Newton came up with the gravity and then we realized that that's not complete. Then, you know, Einstein basically altered it. Now that's what we know of. Now there are certain things like you know quantum mechanics and things like that basically tells us that that might not be accurate as well. We need to you know see more properties of gravity too. Like Einstein might have, Einstein was obviously uh, you know right, just like Newton was right too. But there are more properties of uh, gravity that we might discover one day. So you know, I think there is lots of things that we don't know. So trying to explain everything by string theory is hard. You know Brian Greene is also string theorist. Uh, you know he was once saying that. Uh, it's not that we are not making progress. I mean, we are making progress in string theory, but any experiment that we we might want to show is hard to do since we need immense level of uh, large particle accelerator, humongous particle accelerator like the size of the moon or something. And what we have today is nowhere near that. So it's hard to show in experiment what we found. So far, it's on the paper. You know, it's just you know basically in theory rather than a practical thing. But yeah, I don't know if string theory is going to work or not. It might. Who the hell knows? This is going to be a fun video. Cause Gazad is a great channel. I love reacting to this channel. You know, I love any science topic. And this channel is just great. I wrote quite a few Cause Gazad videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cars. There's a playlist for it. Uh, check out the playlist too. Like, you know, Oli Sarcastic Prox and Internet Historian, Real Life Floor, CGP Grey. And yeah, let's watch this one. This is a Cause Gazad video. It might get blocked. So I would check it box there. But if it's that big of an issue, there's a link in the description with the original video. You know, I guess you watch it side by side. And yeah, let's watch this one. What is the true nature of the universe? To answer this question, humans come up with stories to describe the world. We test our stories and learn what to keep and what to throw away. But the more we learn, the more complicated and weird our stories become. Some of them so much so that it's really hard to know what they're actually about. Like string theory, a famous controversial and often misunderstood story about the nature of everything. Why did we come up with it? And is it correct or just an idea we should chuck out? To understand the true nature of reality, we looked at things up close and were amazed. Wondrous landscapes in the dust, zoos of bizarre creatures, complex protein robots, all of them made from structures of molecules made up of countless, even smaller things, atoms. We thought they were the final layer of reality until we smashed them together really hard and discovered things that can't be divided anymore, elementary particles. But now we had a problem. They're so small that we could no longer look at them. Think about it. What is seeing? To see something, we need light, an electromagnetic wave. Oh. This wave hits the surface of the thing and gets reflected back from it into your eye. I think he's going to talk about the double slit experiment, how the observer effect works. Yeah, it's going to be fun. The wave carries information from the object that your brain uses to create an image. So you can't see something without somehow interacting with it. Seeing is touching, an active process, not a passive one. <laughs> this is not a problem with most things. But particles are very, very, very small. So small that the electromagnetic waves we use to see are too big to touch them. Visible light just passes over them. We can try to solve this by creating electromagnetic waves with more and much smaller wavelengths. But more wavelengths means more energy. So when we touch a particle with a wave that has a lot of energy, it alters it. Yeah, basically in the double slit experiment, you know, if you shoot uh, the, you know, uh, basically electron wave at it and you try to observe it, 
how the how, how do you absorb it i mean if, if the light basically touches that and goes into your eye or whatever instrument that is you know in any way so the point is in any way to measure something like taking data in you're supposed to send some form of energy to it if you want to take some kind of a data in so that changes it so in double state experiment uh, you know when you shoot uh, you know wave of electron uh, in the double slits basically and if you try to observe it those waves now force to become particle so you know it changes the experiment so it's you know the, the point is if you observe it you can't know it's you know basically the the way the experiment is supposed to go you can't see that just because you are observing it in any way it's not just your eyes any instrument or anything that's the observer effect by looking at a particle we change it so we can't measure elementary particles precisely this fact is so important that it has a name the Heisenberg, Heisenberg yeah. uncertainty principle the basis of all quantum physics so what does a particle look yeah observer effect you know it's also Heisenberg uncertainty principle because uh, you cannot measure anything at that level of accuracy if you measure something it will change its state at you know some level so you can't know that for that accuracy the basic way of thinking is if you want to see a tire's pressure you need to get, let some air out in order to see the presser. But now letting the air out changes the presser. So it's not the originally what it was. So it's that kind of thing. Like then, what is its nature? We don't know. If we look really hard, we can see a blurry sphere of influence, but not the particles themselves. We just know they exist. But if that's the case, how can we do any science with them? We did what humans do and invented a new story, a mathematical fiction. The story of the point particle. We decided that we would pretend that a particle is a point in space. Any electron is a point with a certain electric charge and a certain mass, all indistinguishable from each other. This way, physicists could define them and calculate all of their interactions. This is called quantum field theory and solved a lot of problems. All of the standard model of particle physics is built on it, and it predicts lots of things very well. Some quantum properties of the electron, for example, have been tested and are accurate up to 0.0000000000002%. So while particles are not really points, by treating them as if they were, we get a pretty good picture of the universe. It works. Not only did this idea advance science, it also led to a lot of real-world technology we use every day. But there's a huge problem, gravity. In quantum mechanics, all physical forces are carried by certain particles. But according to Einstein's general relativity, gravity is not a force like the others in the universe. If the universe is a play, particles are the actors, but gravity is the stage. Yeah. To put it simply, gravity is a theory of geometry, the geometry of space-time itself, of distances which we need to describe with absolute precision. But since there is no way to precisely measure things in the quantum world, our story of gravity doesn't work with our story of quantum physics. When physicists tried to add gravity to the story by inventing a new particle, their mathematics broke down. And this is a big problem. If we could marry gravity to quantum physics and the standard model, we would have the theory of everything. So, very smart people came up with a new story. They asked, what is more complex than a point? A line or a string? String theory was born. Yeah. What makes string theory so elegant is that it describes many different elementary particles as different modes of vibration of the string. Just like a violin string vibrating differently can give you a lot of different notes, a string can give you different particles. Most importantly, this includes gravity. String theory promised to unify all fundamental forces of the universe. This caused enormous excitement and hype. String theory quickly graduated to a possible theory of everything. Unfortunately, string theory comes with a lot of strings attached. <laughs> Much of the maths involving a consistent string theory does not work in our universe with its three spatial and one temporal dimensions. String theory requires 10 dimensions to work out. So string theorists did calculations in model universes. 
and then try to get rid of the six additional dimensions and describe our own universe. But so far, nobody has succeeded and no prediction of string theory has been proven in an experiment. Okay, first of all, like I said, you know, like Brian Greene says, in order to experiment, you need a massive particle accelerator because you need immense energy for to do that. And just because somebody hasn't come up with it, doesn't mean this is stupid. I mean, it could be true. And if it's true, we we have basically found the basic basis of everything. We went to real deep core and we figured everything out. I mean, that's a really big task. I mean, people are like, oh, it's been a few decades already. Have you come up with it? It's not that simple, man. Maybe we'll need to develop some kind of a massive particle accelerator that basically is you know, larger than our moon or something just to test these theories. Who the hell knows? So string theory did not reveal the nature of our universe. One could argue that in this case, string theory really isn't useful at all. Science is all about experiments and predictions. If we can't do those, why should we bother with strings? It really is all about how we use it. Physics is based on maths. 2 plus 2 makes 4. This is true no matter how you feel about it. And the maths in string theory does work out. That's why string theory is still useful. Imagine that you want to build a cruise ship, but you only have blueprints for a small rowing boat. There are plenty of differences. The engine, the materials, the scale. But both things are fundamentally the same, things yeah. that float. So by studying the rowing boat blueprints, you might still learn something about how to build a cruise ship eventually. With string theory, we can try to answer some questions about quantum gravity that have been puzzling physicists for decades, such as how black holes work or the information paradox. String theory may point us in the right direction. When used in this spirit, string theory becomes a precious tool for theoretical physicists and help them discover new aspects of the quantum world and some beautiful mathematics. So maybe the story of string theory is not the theory of everything. But just like the story of the point particle, it may be an extremely useful story. Yeah. We don't yet know what the true nature of reality is, but we'll keep coming up with stories to try and find out until one day, hopefully, we do know. Yeah. This video was supported by the Swiss National Science Foundation and realized with the scientific advice of Alessandro Svondre. Yeah, so basically string th theory might not be the answer to everything, but we might still find something that we don't know. It's a still uncharted territories. And it's not like they're not making some progress. They are making some progress. But, you know, in future, we might realize that, you know, th there is something to this. If we were not making any progress with this, yeah, throw it out. But even if we're making even a smallest progress, no, it's still a proper, you know, proper thing. Why not? I mean, it's not it's not require that much, uh, you know, investment into string theory. It's basically like a pen and paper. And obviously, there's more to that, but still, it's just you know people trying to figure things out. So why not? String theory is still promising. Uh, even if this string theory that we know of today, that people are thinking what string theory is, that might not be true. But string theory could evolve in a point where, you know, string theory maybe works. Who the hell knows? So this is still promising. All right, people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards, playlist. Check out the end cards. And I'll see you next time.